Good evening and afternoon everybody. I hope you guys are all enjoying your wonderful day. And in this video, I'm going to have a rather exciting upload for those who are into the tropical weather. As in this video, I'm going to be doing my first preliminary thoughts for the 2024 North Atlantic hurricane season. I'm not going to have like an official prediction or map or anything like that uh, in this video just because again, it is May 1st. So we still have a good amount of time, a good month until the hurricane season starts. So I'll probably have one or two more updates between then. And then in one of those, I'll probably in my final, I'll probably have a, an updated map with numbers. But the Colorado State has come out with their um, hurricane season prediction, which is actually rather high. And I will tell you guys, the setup as of now does look to paint for a rather active hurricane season. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So we're going to go ahead and start off by looking at the um, Enzo Outlook, which just actually just updated two days ago. And as many of you guys know, we've been under a pretty strong El Nino since the fall and beginning of winter. So you're probably wondering why would it be active if we're still in an El Nino, which would favor actually the Eastern Pacific. Well, things are going to change actually rapidly. So we actually are under a La Nina watch, and it is that likely... Uh, as it tells here, the tropical Pacific atmospheric anomalies for El Nino are weakening and a transition from El Nino to an Enzo neutral is likely already by between April and June. And again, we are already in May and we are transitioning already. And then there's an odds of La Nina developing by June slash August. And as you guys, those months are basically right near towards the peak of hurricane season, which is August, September, in October. So, and that's a 60% chance. So things are going to change rapidly as the SSTs in the Pacific are really changing. Trade winds are helping in. And the conditions riding both the Pacific and Atlantic as of now are really favoring this tuition to a La Nina, which obviously would really favor the North Atlantic. So again, transitioning from an El Nino to La Nina with a 60% chance just before the peak season. So it could be a pretty active one. And it's kind of crazy how dramatically we're changing from an El Nino to a La Nina so fast. So let's go ahead and look at the overall uh, 3.4 uh, region anomaly. And you can tell, like we, like I said, we've this is the this is the the positive 0.5 is the I cannot draw straight is the minimum for oh my gosh I I cannot draw actually whatsoever but you you get on positive above positive 0.5 is the, the like the threshold the minimum threshold for an El Nino so throughout the obviously the winter and even like just recently in April we are right pretty moderate to strong El Nino but we are we dramatically decreased within two weeks to the threshold and then increased a little bit and now we are below the threshold. So obviously we're not technically in an Enzo neutral right now because it has to stay that way for a few weeks. That's why we are under a you know, watch because again, the trends are favoring uh, getting uh, ready to a neutral, which is an 85% chance, I think it said. And then between April and June. So by June, we could probably have an official Enzo neutral. And this is likely to continue decreasing. Again, it's still May 1st. And not, even if it's still an Enzo neutral in June, that still leaves maybe the August, September, and October timeframe, which are the peak, peak months. Uh, but even then, even though it is, again, still transi transitioning into a neutral, we are having conditions already start to change dramatically in, 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 the, in the waters and in the, with the train winds and all that. So even then, although we're not technically an official neutral in Stone and El Nino, the conditions are, again, favoring this trend towards a favorable North Atlantic hurricane season. So again, likely for this to continue to decrease. And let's go ahead and like see what this would do, actually. So what would what would happen how would the conditions favor a a hurricane an active hurricane season in the atlantic if we were to get to a la nina so for those who really aren't familiar with a la nina does and what that basically means is that in the 3.4 region in the pacific which is basically kind of the middle ish in the pacific equatorial pacific uh once the ssts are really cold or below average that's going to actually allow for uh well that happens because of the strength in trade winds and the strong trade winds will push the warm water westward towards areas such as Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Australia, and just the Western Pacific and even in parts of the Eastern Indian Ocean. And what that push in the warm water does is that pushes the convection and the rising air to the west and it pushes this and it allows sinking air and the cooler temperatures to happen in the Pacific. And so what that would actually do is if we were to get to La Nina and it were to happen how it's supposed to happen is that as we're seeing, 
we do not have this right now we have actually rather warm waters but they're actually again as you've seen the 3.4 region has been cooling off dramatically here so it, it, it's it's happening it's in the transitioning phase so this is what it should look like a few weeks to so maybe even a month from now is that uh, we will have those cooler waters across the 3.4 region eastern pacific that will minimize the uh well that will maximize the trade winds here and that's going to allow again to push that warmer water westward so whatever warm water we have right now remaining will actually continue to move westward and i'll show you how that, how that trend's actually been happening already so like these aren't just going off assumptions like it's already happening which is why i'm many meteorologists and and forecasters are kind of pot or kind of confident in this hurricane forecast here but again they're going to see that rising air with that warmer water uh increased convection and that's going to be seeing a lot of storming over that warmer weather they're going to be seeing more thunderstorms prone so it could be seeing an active western uh pacific here and then you're going to be seeing again that sinking gear with the high upper level high pressure and that's going to allow sinking air so that's going to be allowing for kind of just a should be below average hurricane season for the Pacific and then of course the important part the Atlantic so with there being sinking air in the Pacific especially the Eastern Pacific what that would do is actually allow for rising air in the Atlantic just how we see here in the Pacific and the Western Pacific so as of what a La Nina would do is it would actually with the maximized trade winds here it's going to minimize trade winds in the Atlantic minimize trade winds in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific and that's going to be very favorable for storms and and stuff like that to form off maybe in the MDR or in the Caribbean or uh, in maybe even the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, just overall favorable conditions for storms and convection and and uh, low pressure systems and all that. And again, with the lower trade winds, which will happen with La Nina, we'll, we, we will be seeing a lot more favorable shear conditions for storms to actually grow and stuff like that. And maybe like long track major hurricanes and stuff. And then, of course, with La Nina, we will be seeing warmer waters, not only in the Western Pacific, but as well warmer waters across areas in the Atlantic, which, again, we are we're already starting to see these trends here. We're already starting to see the trends move the SSCs westward in the Pacific. We're already seeing these really warm waters in the Atlantic. So it's look, it's already looking like, you know, this forecast is coming to be as of now. Again, things can change or just because it does have this setup doesn't mean it's actually going to pan out the way it does usually. So here's a look at the overall SSTs, and you can already see, again, this is obviously not cold whatsoever, but like I said, we, we've been in a strong El Nino for a pretty long time. So here's the 3.4 region right here. Again, really warm waters uh, around maybe 27, 28 degrees Celsius around there. Uh, so again, those are really warm. So right now, obviously, we're not even close to reaching La Nina status, but the conditions, as you can see, although not necessarily in the 3.4 region, you can see that these waters are kind of, these warm waters are kind of being pushed westward. So these really, really warm waters are for the most part in the central half of the Pacific. So it, it is following the trend that it's going to slowly, obviously, as we go on, move westward with these trade winds. And that's where we're going to start seeing like this area right here, like the, I think this is like the one plus two region off South America and uh, Nino I don't know if there's a Nino 3, but there, I know this is the 1 plus 2, and then I forgot what this region's called. You can see already these cooler waters starting to replace uh, these warmer waters. So obviously, uh, but even in these areas, we have cooler waters beneath the uh, surface or deep in the waters that have not been up surface yet. But here, already starting to see these cooler waters form off South America, and then already starting to see in portions of East Central Pacific already starting to see some cooler water start to develop. So again, that is kind of showing you the gradual progression since maybe January or since maybe even earlier April and March, where we're starting to see a lot cooler waters compared to just a few weeks ago. And obviously as we go maybe to the end of May, things will look a lot different and a lot more favorable towards that La Nina conditions. And again, the Atlantic has been really warm basically for actually quite a while. The SSCs have been pretty warm across the, the Atlantic. Already, you can see that Gulf Stream already starting to see temperatures rise into around 27, 28 degrees Celsius, and then really warm Mars moving off Africa, southern uh, or south, that's not even south, northwestern, sorry, northwestern Africa, starting to see maybe some 28s and a half, maybe 29s. And again, the MDR is looking really warm right now. That is quite warm considering it, it just turned May 1st, just today. So again, looking really warm across the Atlantic, and as we Generally, as you go through summer, temperatures will continue to increase, but they should increase at a 
more above average rate with the temperatures in the uh, Pacific cooling off. Um, here's just another look here. This is looking at the trends between yesterday and today. So this is today and yesterday. So again, 27, 29, even maybe even about the 30 degrees Celsius off parts of Africa. Obviously, again, it's, you know, we're just, we're still in the cooler part. We're still technically in spring here, so the temperatures aren't going to be that warm across areas that aren't too close to the equator. So again, we're still going to be having these cooler waters. As that's not nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, it's it was just eight April. Like you're not going to be seeing that warm temperatures across areas, but you can kind of see, you know, they are getting a little bit warmer. And specifically, we are seeing actually one part of the Gulf Stream right here looking rather warm, 27, 28 degrees Celsius compared to other parts of the Gulf. So could continue to watch that trend here. But overall, again, no issues as of now. And again, really above average across much of the Medi uh, Mediterranean, MDR regions and uh, Western Atlantic across areas like Nicaragua and Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula. Again, those are the areas we want to look out for because those are the areas that you need to look out for in general for the early parts of the season, like June, typically your MDR season there. You're not going to be seeing a lot of June storms unless they're really weak across the Gulf of Mexico um, or not going to be seeing anything too crazy in the areas that are cool right now. So even although they are cool because typically what you see now it's nothing to worry about with the areas that are really warm that's where we're really looking at possibly early formation maybe before june we could have a storm just depending on these conditions but as of now they're looking pretty favorable here let me go ahead and show you the, how like this trend's actually being seen so uh, in the enzo outlook that again up, updated around two days ago you can see that during the last four weeks above average surface, sea surface temperatures weakened across the equatorial pacific so Again, they're still really warm. Obviously, it's not going to change overnight, but they are gradually decreasing here. You can kind of see the overall uh, kind of weakness in formation. Like you can see like areas across like where is where we were looking at the one plus two region, really warm waters. You can kind of see it's really dramatically decreased here in this region. Like it's obviously it's only been, you know, 20 days. Only so much can change in 20 days, but you can kind of go overall see like the western shift in these temperatures like that one area in dark red off uh, like uh, Central America, I mean, there is now blues in that area. So, I mean, I'm just saying that you can see this overall progression and you can kind of see these blues start to see seeing kind of more or more widespread. So you're generally, and you're also definitely seeing, look at this right here. You just draw this line right here. You can see the progression, like look at the difference between the orange colors between 3rd of April and 24th of April. Uh, in the western pacific you can just see the gradual westward push so those trade winds again it's following what we're seeing here like it, it's literally following what you see here those that westward or you can call it easterly winds but moving western you can see those easterly trade winds really push it far west which is again is as of now happening so it does bring a valid um point and it does bring validity to the argument of La Nina coming and there being a variable condition not only in the Atlantic and West. Again, uh, you can see right now we're at a 95% chance between uh, March, April, and May. Again, because I mean, we're already in May, so who cares about the March and April part? But you can see, look how the dramatic the changes. Like, I don't think I've actually seen it change like this in a while from a 95% chance and a 5% chance for a neutral to now a 85% chance for a neutral and a 15% chance for it on Nino. Nowhere do you see blue here, and then blue, you can just see sky rockets. You can just see like, La Nina did a crazy just comeback out of nowhere. You can see nowhere to be seen, not even a 5% chance, not even 1% chance, to all the way up to an above a 85% chance uh, for October, November, November, December. So again, things are not looking the best SOT wise, but I'm telling you things will change like by a month for a different a month from now, June 1st, the start of the hurricane season, I guarantee conditions will look so much more in favor, more, so much more favorable uh, for La Nina. Again, we could possibly even see a 60% chance by again, June, July, and August, like June, July, and August. That's not, I mean, June is next month and July is right around the corner. So again, things are going to change, but again, looking like the La Nina is going to come in handy and come right in time for the peak hurricane season i want to go ahead and show you guys the now um the overall um anomalies uh the monthly anomalies obviously this is to be taken with a grain of salt but i mean it does i mean the models have been pretty consistent over over the past few months with this uh 
above average precipitation across areas like the MDR region. And again, this would follow, again, this would follow the whole La Nina pattern with above average convection and rising air and thunderstorms. So again, June looks really good across the Mediterranean. It actually looks good for the majority of like the Atlantic. Like we don't have any crazy areas with dry and below average precipitation. July, again, you can kind of see this is like, this is actually the more concerning part. It's just the overall pattern is that it covers kind of the whole track of what you would see with the tropical system in july like july you typically see those early mdr storms that are actually really long tracks here that kind of go across maybe the southern parts maybe avoid the u.s or maybe even go out the storm or even you could see an early storm hit you know the united states but this is following like the exact path so if like a storm these conditions do pan out and a storm does form off africa or even south america you could see like really good conditions throughout the whole track of the system or systems so again looking obviously to be taken with a grain of salt things can change dr dramatically but i mean the fact that it's even into august like you usually like when you look at the, the anomalies months out you have like a good month with really good precip and the next month is kind of like, oh man so it's hit or miss but these like august the same pattern like you can let me just circle this real quick like this is the area we need to really look out for because this is where storms were definitely like formed. Like, look at this June, the same thing, July, same thing, August, the same thing. Look at September. September now it even moves a little bit more north. So, again, September is typically seen as the peak month for hurricane season. And going off Africa, really concerning amount of precipitation across like uh, uh, parts of the um, Western Atlantic. I mean, look at that. Very consistent. Like, it's very consistent. That's the concerning thing is that it's so consistent. It, like it's in every month and then again october i mean look at that i mean it's obviously like i said it's it's not you know it's not completely reliable but i don't really think i've seen like the anomalies kind of like have such a trend like f for so many months straight like let me go ahead and circle you know this general area where obviously we in the u.s will be worried worried for and again, June there, July there, August there, September there, October even there, November even there for parts of the MDR. And, and again, November actually is a really hot spot for parts of the Yucatan Peninsula and uh, parts of the Southwest Caribbean. That's actually a hot spot. So the fact that it's like so consistently above average, that would obviously pan out if the trade winds are perfect. And, you know, SSTs are obviously looking good right now. Trade winds are looking good right now. Everything really pans out to bring a an above average hurricane season and again the colorado state university does predict actually 23 name storms which the average is 14 and a half so that's actually a really high number i don't think i've seen colorado state um predict so many storms since the 2020 hurricane season i could be wrong uh i'm not gonna i didn't look at really hurricane season last year either so I mean, that could have happened last year so correct me if i'm wrong but i really haven't seen 23 preliminary storms be predicted by the csu's that high since 2020 i forgot what 2020 was i know it's really high uh predicting predicting 11 hurricanes which is really high compared to the seven and a half average um five major hurricanes and predicting five major hurricanes is crazy high considering how early on it is and an ace of 210 plus which is almost double the average so there is a lot of a lot of confidence in a really active hurricane season in the Atlantic. Again, we will see if that pans out. But as of now, the conditions look really right for it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, be sure to subscribe if you're new or if you didn't realize I was back into forecasting. And again, if you want more updates on the hurricane season or even other general forecasts, be sure, again, to hit the bell button and stuff like that. But hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next one.